Welcome everyone to our live presentation where we're going to talk about fast forming fossils. Now, just to recap, we have spoke about fast forming rock. And one more time, if you haven't seen this already or have, this right here is an iron pipe. This is a sewer pipe that was taken out of the Karlavi Very Czech Republic, where there is a very mineralized uh, amount of water. Their water is very mineralized and it goes through pipes. And look what happens here. This is aragonite. It's a calcite material and it's essentially rock. Here's where it's not polished. Let me show you what it looks like unpolished. 80 years and two and a half inches of buildup. And that's just that's just 80 years. We have other examples where rock can form even quicker than that. The thing is, though, is that if rock can form quickly, what about fossilization? Is fossilization something that can form quickly as well? Now, granted, just because rock can form quickly, fossils can form quickly, let's just say they can, doesn't prove how old they are. But in trying to assemble this picture on what our past is about, you have evidence, circumstantial evidence, and you have to draw a conclusion based on that evidence, unless you go directly to the source in, let's say, Genesis or Darwin or Charles Lyell and say, speak to me what you believe is the truth. So it's either Moses or Charles Lyell and Charles Darwin. It's either one or the other. One speaks of uniformitarianism, which is long periods of time, geologically speaking, with biology that goes through the same long processes of change over time to where we go from a very small or one-celled creature 600 million years ago or so to where we are today, or by special creation, which in six 24-hour literal days, everything was spoken into existence in a six-day period. And here we are today, 6,000 years later. Without the fact that we can't observe it, it all sounds Looney Tunes. I'm talking both of them sound crazy. But one is legitimized, one is quote-unquote science, one is academic, one is natural. Naturalism means that we can see and prove what we see in nature, and we're making assumptions that that's what happened in the past, and we're basing it off of the idea that it's been long periods of time. Because seriously, folks, how could something like this, you and I, be created naturally without long periods of time? So it, by default, it would have to be. All right. So again, I showed you the example of fast forming rock. Let's talk about fast forming fossils. Now, as we do, let's look at the let's look at the evidence and then draw some conclusions from it. Let me start off by showing you the fossil fish, okay? When you look at a fossil, one of the things that you can observe is what kind of state is it in? Well, in this case, this fish right here has a very bent tail. Now, one could draw the conclusion that it died, okay? And that, you know, it got covered by some mud and in the process, you know, its tail flopped over and got caught looking like that. That's one interpretation. The other interpretation is, is that this was buried very quickly, very profoundly and violently. And this is the reason why the tail is turned up. Now, you won't find them in all fossils, but look at the fossils and notice how some of like the lizards, you'll find their necks like in a, a death pose. Think in terms of crime scene investigation. Think in terms of, is this a death pose or is this where they fell asleep, died, covered over, and then the fossilization process began. Another question we can ask ourselves, are there fossils that are in the process of forming as well too? I mean, if we look back and we're looking at what we, we see today and taking that and going back millions of years ago, then where are the fossils that are in the process of forming at the moment? You would think that we would find some half fossilized. And it's not that you don't, but those are usually assigned a long time ago. Look, in the United States, and I'm not sure if this is all over the world, but all fossils are at least 
10,000 years old, according to the evolutionary, modern geolo geological, paleontological way of reckoning time and the processes of it. 10,000 years. So there isn't any fossils that are younger than that. If you can form fossils quickly, could you draw a conclusion that maybe, just maybe, they might be younger because of the fact that it takes very little time to form? Just putting it out there. Now, another thing that we can look at when we look at the fossil record and ask ourselves, how were these buried? Is the delicate details of the object that was buried. This right here is a shrimp. This shrimp, folks, was buried in such a way that look how beautiful and how detailed that is. This doesn't look like something that died naturally, then was covered over with some mud. Friends, you got to not only bury this in mud, but you got to bury it super deep because you need to have it encapsulated, almost cut off completely from microbes and air and predators and everything that can deteriorate this before it can turn into a fossil. If this took a hundred years to begin the fossilization process, it wouldn't happen. I mean, even six months. Where's that? What's this? What's going to happen to this carcass in six months? Even if it's buried in a hundred feet of mud, what's it going? What's going to happen to it? It's got to be something more to this. And we're going to explore more of this as I learn, you're going to learn, or at least consider some of the things that I find out. Look, you don't need to be a geology expert. You don't need to be have a doctorate in paleontology. All you got to do is have a mind that wonders. Shoulder to shoulder, we're just going to go through this together. So I present this piece of evidence that shows that this shrimp was buried very profoundly, very deeply, very quickly, and very violently, just like this fish. Notice the fish bones. The bones, the flesh holds the bones in place. Those bones, that flesh never got a chance to rot, at least not, not right away. Before it was replaced by minerals or the impression of it. So, and you look at the backbone, look at the backbone. Let me show you something that's really beautiful. It's kind of heavy. Here we have two, one, two, three leaves and a fish. How did this get buried? Ask yourself the question. Don't just take for granted because it's a, a fossil that it just went through a fossilization process that we never really think too much about. Ask, why are those leaves so perfectly flat? Why is that fish so perfectly intact? Why are they being buried together? What's the scenario? You know, if there was only maybe a half a dozen, a dozen, a hundred fossils throughout the world in similar situations like this, we could say, well, you know, it got caught up, you know, in some kind of local flood or, you know, it got just got buried real quick for whatever reason. You can make up a story. But we see this all over the world. We see that there's not just millions of fossils. There's billions of fossils. And by the way, I've heard anywhere between 95 to 99% of all fossils is um, aquatic, aquatic fossils. That's interesting. But look at that one more time. Look how beautiful the leaf is and the fish. That's intact, friends. Those fins and scales and bones are being held together by flesh. And that flesh is being preserved briefly before it can begin the fossilization process. Now, I want to I'm going to share with you one thing that may shock you, but I'm going to show it to you nevertheless. Here we go. This is a maple leaf looking fossilized leaf. Now the stem is being bent backwards over the leaf itself. Maybe this leaf is is a little bit better on camera. There you go. Do you see that? 
Now, we would say that these are millions of years old, that these leaves can be identified as a certain species and it's found in a certain, well, this is kind of chalky right here. And we know that the layer and such and the formation is such because they've already cataloged it all over the world. They've got the formation, the type of rock, how old it is. The index fossils are in the, those rocks typically. And it's true, they do classify the fossils. We'll talk about classification another time. But so they've got it all mapped out. So they pretty much know how old these things are. If I was to show you this fossil right here, how old would you say that is? Well, you could say that it's millions of years old, 200, 300,000 years old, 100 million years old. Gee, John, it really does depend on the strata that it's found in or what formation you found that in. True. But what if I told you, and this is real, this is not a painting, it's nothing. Let me just show you. This is literally what we just saw a second ago. The only difference is, is that science debates the age of this of millions of years versus the creationist point of view that says that everything was buried during the worldwide flood and this fossil is no more than 4,400 years old and it was formed very, very quickly. Now the evolutionary process, you won't find very, very quickly necessarily. You will find buried in the mud and it took a long time to form. This right here, friends, was formed in the lab and it took 48 hours in order to produce this. 48 hours in the laboratory. We're going to have a whole video on just exactly how this was created. Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, apparently we got some other leaves also in this stack that was done. Those are rock, friends. These are rock impressions just like we see in the fossil record. Now, you may want to argue the fact that this was done in a controlled environment and that those conditions that were done were accelerated and that that's not the same thing as what I just showed you here. Or during the worldwide flood, those conditions existed and that's the reason why you find fossils. And that's the reason why you, find, you don't find fossils being formed today. You don't unless you go and replicate those conditions that we believe were as such that it created the fossilization process very quickly, buried very profoundly, heat perhaps, maybe, maybe some, maybe not all, I'm not sure, but I'm just saying though that those conditions were right. When we replicate those, those conditions in a laboratory, this is what we get within 48 hours. We get a fossil leaf. I want to thank you very much for um, joining us. And I want to encourage you, those of you who like to get cozy with us, come on, give us a text. Say, hey, John, now this text number right here, 315-509-9075, is only good for the United States and Canada. If you're watching this live or you're watching this recorded, you just go ahead and text me and I'll respond back and I'll say, hey, Bob, hey, Mary, welcome to the text group. We have almost 300 people in there that currently that get a text from me letting, me, letting them know when we have a new video or when we go live. Uh, you'll probably hear from me maybe once or twice a week, but only those who really dig this kind of thing, okay? It is free, absolutely free. All right, until next time, thank you very much. We've got hundreds of videos on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to enjoy them, and we'll see you in the next presentation.